There are some of our brothers and sisters you come by and you cannot help but wonder what exactly went wrong with this one. And the brother we are going to be looking at today falls under that category. When I came by him on TikTok, I was like, brother, what happened to you? Talk to us, please. Because brother is just on them TikTok streets licking white South African people's asses. Today's video is a long one, but we're just going to be taking a look at a part of it. But if you want to see the full video in its entirety, it's linked down below in the description. So without further ado, let's roll the clip. Why do I love Afrikaans people? Afrikaans people are a group of Europeans that came to South Africa looking for greener pastures. You need to understand that no one leaves a place that they live in if they're living well, unless if they're going for something better. No one leaves the place they're living in to go to something worse. A lot of the white Europeans that came to South Africa were looking for a better life because in Europe, they were not the great guys. They were not living well. They were not rich. And they found out that in Africa, you can reinvent your life and become something great. And that's why they came here. From when they came here, they then started what we call interbreeding, so to speak. Inter-nationality breeding. French, the Dutch, the Germans... British, some other European nations started breeding with each other and they created a new group of white people called Afrikaners. The term Afrikaner means of Africa, from Africa, African, Afrikaner. But they are not of Africa though. They are not from here. And the fact that this Africana identity that they are very proud of is one that they stole. It's a stolen identity. Oderam Afrikaner, the first Afrikaner, was a person of color and people of Dutch descent stole that identity from him when they didn't want to be associated with the colonizer culture anymore. And they decided to create a mix of a language, uh, Dutch mostly, a bit of German, a bit of French, um, and some mix from some of the Bushmen, Khoi and Sun people from the Western Cape. And they created this new language called Afrikaans. Again, speaking an ode or, or telling an ode or writing an ode and showing their love and appreciation for this continent. Afrikaners speaking Afrikaans. And they told themselves, we're going to come and work the land here. They found a lot of barren land. A lot of barren land. They found livestock and they decided to create farms. They found. They found a lot of barren land. They found livestock. <laughs> I can't help but laugh, I'm sorry. You know, it's quite interesting how these people are lucky. Ah, they've got to be the most lucky set of people on the face of the earth because they just be finding stuff. Things will just be in places waiting for them to come and find them. For me, it's the way this guy is inaccurately telling history and how it comes off like he's romanticizing it. And just listening to this brother speak, you can tell that he has internalized a whole lot of white talking points. It's like listening to a white person tell you the history of South Africa. There's a whole lot of internalization going on right here in this clip. Me, I'm just here like, brother, are they paying you to say this or are you doing this for free? Mossy said this one is working overtime for his Afriforum membership, I swear. Black Rose says they found what? Livestock? Laughing emojis? They surely found a laughing stock in this one. Penwell is gone. See, Penwell is in a sunken place. Pantaranda said, poor Manuel, his past life as a Dutch settler is manifesting strong. And this next comment said, what twack is he smoking? See, brother is on some very strong ish here. Very strong ish. People like him make themselves readily available for white supremacy. White supremacy loves to use them because guess what? I got this video from a white guy's page. This video was reposted by a white South African. That was, that was how I even came by this conversation to begin with. You see, a white South African posting a video of a black man saying all of this. Just, you know regurgitating their talking points it, they love it they live for this stuff what we have today is we have or what we had back then we had Afrikaners deciding you know what we're very good at farming we're very good at agriculture and they decided that they want to try and be seen in this nation and instead of whining instead of toy toying and marching and putting together petitions they came to get in their churches they had the Nederlandse gereformeerde kerk, the NG kerk, the Dutch Reformed Church. They got together in those churches and they decided it's time for us to pull our funds and to make a mark in this country. Along with a whole lot of great Afrikaans leaders, they created what was known as the Reading Starts Bond, and then they created a secret society known as the Bruderbond, which was very strict, had to be male, 
had to be from a Christian Calvinist background, had to be married. So they made sure that the men that came, they were disciplined, had some kind of a family and had a religious underpinning that they understood. And they create, came and created the Bruder Bond. They set principles and they set a vision. So he basically went on and on and on about the achievements of the Afrikaners and he said that was the reason why he loved them. Why do I love Afrikaans people? They don't love you, they love their people. You can love them all you want. They love their people. A black government can learn from them. Love your people enough to truly create infrastructure policies and development for the people that you love and care for. When the country was handed over, their economic roots were so deep and so strong because they secured the future of their people. The Bantu Act, the Land Act, and the state theology of the Dutch Reformed Church made sure that no other race develops with them. And that's a fact. Today, all these companies, all these wealthy Afrikaners that you mentioned, it is to be admired how they built how they planned years and years ahead. It wasn't for you. It wasn't for me. It was for their people. That's a very beautiful statement right there. And I believe that we all globally should take on that mindset, not just, you know, indigenous South Africans, not just Africans on the continent, not just African Americans, not just um, Caribbeans, right? Globally, as a people, as a global black community, as a global African community, we all have to take on this mindset of putting ourselves first, putting our future first, securing our future and working actively towards making sure that we are protected on the long run. We have to be purposeful about securing our ends and our future. We have to actively go out and unapologetically be for us and for us only like we see every other group operates. Invest in culture and make sure that even in your small communities, people are coming together. I used to watch as a boy coming up how Afrikaans mothers and fathers would be fully involved in school. They'd be there all the prize. The mothers would bring us lasagna. They'd host us when we were performing with choir. They'd travel with us. Um, and it was a beautiful thing to see. And I think it's something that I think black Africans then learn from. Obviously, we have a very bad history with Afrikaans people because they were oppressed and they killed a lot of black Africans. They relegated black people from their land to townships and made them live like cockroaches and rats in townships, which black people by and large still live today. But if we can take away the emotions and look at the small group of people and what they have achieved as a community, even to this day, there's something that black Africans can learn from there and implement. And if black Africans can do that, they can go anywhere in the world and become strong and dominant. This is Penuel the Black Pen, why I love Afrikaners and why I think black Africans should learn from them. So brother did come around there, I'll give him that, and he did, you know, drop some things that we could take home after giving this extensive tribute that seemed like it would never come to an end to the Afrikaners. But my sentiment is very simple. If you want to share history or talk about history, please be accurate about it because the inaccuracies in his video was just too much. And like I said, if you want to check out the whole thing, it's linked down below in the description. And another thing, if you want to make a video like this and you, in your opinion, are saying that you want to, you know, tell black people to learn from these people, but then you go on to use, you know, their talking points that berate and lead to black people, talking points like they don't like to work, they are lazy, they are asking for handouts. That's not a route you should be taking. If you are really about helping these people, perpetuating stereotypes against black people would in no way, shape or form help black people. And this is why earlier 
I made mention of the internalization of white supremacy talking points that is going on in his video in an insane percentage. Well guys, what are your thoughts on all of this? Let's continue this conversation down below in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and of course as always I'll see you guys in the next one.